Hello guys, my name is Anthony and as you already know, um, I've got a series that I'm going to be doing, well not a series, it's going to be like a compilation of interviews with my brethren um, about Healthy Ego. That's a, a project I've got coming out, an EP that I've worked on um, and I thought why not give you a piece of content to obviously combine that with the music. And um, yeah, I'll just be having conversations with my brethren about having our egos and us being a man and um, and both of them being encompassing and seeing whether we like our egos, whether we feel like we have egos and how we deal with that as a man. And um, the first person I'll be having a conversation with is my very, very good brethren, Mr. Leo, right here. Jeez, and I'm on. a Leo as well, so hey, it's the, it's the world combining as, mm. as, as, as it usually does. Do you know what, I usually describe how I am in like three different ways. So mm -hmm. physically, at the moment, I'm a little bit tired. Just okay. had a session. Calm. Um, but what that type changes, of session was that? That changes all the time. It was um, strength and conditioning, cardio, okay. Calm. Muay Thai. That good, um, that good work? Yeah, the good work, the, the proper good work. After I'm feeling like, yeah, I've done something really valuable. Um, <clears throat> mentally, I'm good. good. I'm in a really good space. Wicked. Um, spiritually, I'm in an extraordinary space. And, Damn. And, and for me, that's the most important thing. So it's Wicked. being content and being strong spiritually, that's, that's what my My bro. Ashton, what you saying, man? You good? Okay, good, good, good. Good to see you. How are you? Yo, people, we're back again um, with my guy, Saf. Or nice. Safi. How you doing? Saying, you good? Yeah, very good. Thank you. How are you? I'm good, man. How's life? Great. Great? Great. Yeah, yeah. Can't complain. Life's um, been good to me. Nice, nice. New Year. How, how you good? feeling? Yeah, we started, started quite... Um, started in the, right, in the right way, man. You know what I mean? We moved, it, we moved a lot of distractions. Um, currently trying to live without having a phone. Like, I have a phone, but not a phone for people to communicate with me for. Okay, hey. Just to work with, you know what I mean? And hey. it's, 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 done, it's, it's helped me a lot. Yo, peoples, I'm with my guy now, Crofts. What are you saying, bro? My G. You good? Yeah, Good yeah, to bless. see you, man. It's been yeah. a while. Yeah, yeah, it has been a while. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. How's life for you right now? Yeah, all good, man. You good? Right. Yeah, it's all blessed, bro. Um, where would you say like you're at right now? Are you in a good space right now? Yeah. It could be better or no, all good. Obviously, it's a new year and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, got, yeah. Got, got, got a few things I'd like to achieve this year. Facts. Um, just normal, just get going. Yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. How would you say that like, we even came into contact? How do we know each other? Would you say for the people? Mad. Yeah. So we know each other from work. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, years ago. Facts. Just randomly at work. Um, just started chatting. Um. We had a lot, of, lot in common. Yeah, facts. We, I think we spoke about music like almost straight away. M music is the common yeah. denominator still. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's, I think that's the, because obviously you meet people at work all the time. Yeah. But in terms of like longevity, longevity of a relationship or a friendship. Yeah. So there's something that there's something has got to be deeper that links you guys. One hundred percent. And it's yeah. definitely the music. Obviously, love of football as well. Yeah, of course, of course. So <laughs> but the music United, is yeah, 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 yeah opposite. opposite. Yeah, but that's but, what happens. Yeah, for real. Yeah. But it's, it's definitely the love of music. Yeah. Um, obviously, me as an artist and Crafts as a producer. He's produced like um, a couple of my songs as well, a couple of my bigger songs as well. Um, Next to Blow being yeah. probably the main one, I'll yeah, say yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, very talented, even if he doesn't so. believe so himself. <laughs> you know, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I won't say you don't believe it, but I think you're very humble. Thank you. You, you, don't, you don't really like to talk, which um, just shows the level of person you are. You're not, you're not um, flamboyant. Yeah. You're, you're very reserved yeah, yeah, in yeah, nature. Bit, yeah. Um, yeah, this is a bit of a be, me being an extrovert. Yeah, no I, I'm intended. having to draw this out of you yeah, still. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I, and I think, funny enough, obviously, while we're even here now, um, obviously to discuss healthy ego, mm. um, I think even me saying, obviously, me looking you in a certain type of way, a certain type of light, as I said, in terms of you coming across very humble, I see you, obviously, I'm not speaking on your behalf, but from what I see on from you, you, see, you seem as someone that's... You've got your ego in check. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm with my guy now. Rizzy, what are you saying? Brother. Good to see you, man. Yeah, man. What's life saying? Yeah, life's good, man. Health good? Yeah, grateful, man. Good mental space? Health is good, mind is good. Can't so tell complain. the people what you do. Yeah, so Rizzy here. I'm a content creator slash entrepreneur. Facts. And I run a self-care platform named Good Man Factory. Good Man Factory. And what do you like, what do you specialize in within Good Man Factory? So we sell men's grooming products for the beard, uh, and face and yeah we just promote self-care mentally physically uh, we may also make um online content as well wicked uh, across youtube check us out that, that's specializing with men isn't it that yeah so, so it's mainly focused on you know men but you yeah. know we've we've had uh 
conversations that are inclusive to everybody else too. As it should be, I feel, because it impacts everyone at the end of the day. Yeah. Like, what would you say, like, when you hear the term healthy ego, what does that bring to mind for you, would you say? Healthy ego? Um, I don't know, actually. It, seems, it sounds like a, um, what's it, oxymoron. Yeah. Like two yeah, words yeah, that yeah. I put together. Like, it kind I don't of does. Know. I feel like um, having an ego is generally a bad thing, if that makes sense. Not, it, like, like having an ego is like, you know, you, you, you associate that with people who are being like big headed, toot their own trumpet, you know, shout from the rooftops how great they are. So I feel like having a healthy ego, having an ego to me is not healthy, <laughs> if that makes sense. Interesting. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. That's, that's the way I feel. I feel like them two words mashed together don't, don't mean like they should be next to each other. It's, it's interesting because I think my viewpoint on on the word health or the term healthy ego is kind of opposite to what you said. Because for me, I feel like having an ego or, or the word ego is not so, such thing. It's not automatically an, uh, um, a negative. I feel like just I feel that like society has deemed ego a negative, but I feel like ego is almost like a. It's not, for me, I see it as almost self protection in a sense where. And I feel like I need my ego, in a sense, to protect me from, um, from, from, from other people. Sometimes, even myself. Sometimes you need your ego to be checked, and, and, I, need, and I need my ego in order to protect myself from other people's bullshit. In a sense, where like sometimes my ego prevents me prevents me from allowing other people's negativity to impact myself, or how I move in the world. In a sense, where like I carry myself a certain type of way. If I had no ego, I feel like I wouldn't care about how I present myself. Do you understand? Like in the sense, in the sense, in the sense how how I how I impact the world or people around me. I, I, the way I view ego is in a sense where self care, um, self preservation. I don't see it in a sense where I think when you have an unhealthy ego, you impact people in a negative and you see yourself as above people. Whereas mm-hmm. having a healthy ego, I believe in a sense is where you're able to kind of like do the work. You've done the work within yourself to then impact people in a positive way. And, and, and also as well, do the work within yourself to not only impact people in a, in a positive way, but lead, lead a good life for yourself. Because I, I believe you can't pour out of an empty cup. You have, to, you have to take care of yourself to then take care, care of other people, especially people you love and care for. And I feel like if you go through this world without having any ego, any care about things that are important to you, I feel like you'll be walked all over. People see you in a certain type of way. You won't get the respect that you, you want to reciprocate it in a sense. So it's like similar to having like self-esteem. It's yeah, like self-esteem. Yeah, okay, yeah, fair. Yeah. So the official definition, I think, of ego is it's around um, someone's self-esteem okay. and self-importance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think for me, I have a healthy self-esteem and healthy mm. self-importance. So like if, if we're going by the official definition, but then also with my own definition, I say it's around um, how my subconsciousness is connecting to my consciousness okay. or my intuition. So I feel like I've, I've got a healthy ego mm-hmm. um, from both of those definitions. And I think the way I realized that, so for example, um, it's going to sound funny, but I'll just be super honest and, mm-hmm. and stuff. It's just um, not long ago, we're just talking about like when people are dating and things like that. So for yep. me, for example, if I'm, let's say, if I'm on a dating app mm-hmm. and then let's say, you know, like you're doing a whole swipe and thing, or whatever, mm-hmm. and then let's yeah. say there's a lady on there who's, let's say, overweight. And okay. then obviously, like I know from, from myself, like I know someone's overweight. It's not really necessarily healthy, so mm-hmm. I'd rather like you know because I, I live a healthy lifestyle, so I'd rather want to have someone that's more aligned to similar you, yeah. level. Yeah, so, yeah, facts, yeah. so if I say, oh, like I prefer to have <laughs> someone that's fit and you know yeah. they work out, to me that's a healthy ego. But it sounds one way to have a yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's hundred percent. It's yeah. your standards. Yeah, yeah. So to me that's a healthy facts. ego, um, because part of my self importance, self importance in life yeah, yeah, is yeah. from being with someone that I value in terms of like, you know, what they do and, yeah, and, and yeah, how they do it. Yeah, how they live um, their life. But then to another person that might be, oh, that's a bit unhealthy, your ego is a bit unhealthy. So yeah. it's an interesting thing. Vanity because, and all that type of things there. Yeah, yeah so someone is, a lot of the time it will be about perspective, right? So mm. so from my perspective, I think I definitely have an, a, a healthy ego. When uh, I hear the, the term healthy, or the, the, the two words, healthy and ego, yeah. I see them as two separate things. Um, because firstly, you have to actually look at where the term ego came from for you to even ask me that what do i think of the healthy ego you have to actually look at the root of where ego came from and where it actually comes from matters so when you look at the etymology of ego it came from 
the clinical work of Sigmund Freud. So a lot of my understanding of ego comes from philosophy. Okay. Now it has swayed towards religion. But initially and majority of my opinions with regards to what you're asking will come from the philosophical aspect. So what do I mean? Not to bore people and simplify it very, very quickly. Sigmund Freud had this concept of the ego being split into three. The ego, the id and the superego. And him being a German, the term for I was das ich, which is the I. How did it come into the English language was his uh, translator Ernest Jones who then translated the word ego. Uh, sorry, he used the Latin word ego for das ich because das ich sounds a bit clunky, it sounds a bit harsh in the English language. So he used the Latin word um, ego, which literally translates to I, myself. So what I identify healthy ego, ego as, as, so for example, like, let's just say your team loses in the match, <laughs> right? Yeah. As a competitor, your yeah. ego kicks in and thinks like, no, you know what, I'm going to go and train harder. Yeah. To, to, and, and the same for all, your team loses and, and you, you, you were to blame. I think a healthy ego in that situation is like, it's having the ego to be like, damn, this, this, my profession, I, I did not perform at the level I should be performing, I understand I should be performing. And what I'm going to then go and do is take the action to work on my skill set to improve so the next time I'm competing, I'm competing at a better level, which ultimately benefits my team. That kind of ego is healthy ego. Mm. Mm. Do you get it? I get it, yeah. Even though it was self, and it was about self, is the self-esteem, the self-importance and stuff. You used it in a healthy way though, to yeah. benefit you and to ultimately benefit your team. Yeah. So e ego isn't it like your self-confidence? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of think it's like your self-confidence. Um, how you sort of can like appear to someone or mm. how you feel. Mm. Um, but then there's 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 that like line where it can turn to arrogance to some people. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I feel like everyone should have an ego. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, you put you said healthy ego, mm. so it makes sense because perhaps like your ego could be not so healthy in the sense of like mm. you're more arrogant. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's, it's like believing in yourself. Yeah. So healthy ego to me means using your ego in a healthy manner. Um, okay. But I don't understand why we need to place healthy in front of ego because ego is not toxic the actual yeah. definition of ego is you know self-importance yeah, like yeah. is uh how you perceive your self-importance yeah, and yeah. like self-perception yeah, yeah that to me isn't toxic yeah so yeah. ego i think l labeling the healthy before it is nice to point out that I'm using my ego in a healthy way. I think I think what it is, sorry to cut you, but I think in, in society now, yeah, people when they hear the word ego, they automatically put egotistical. Yeah. They 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 put the negative connotation on it to immediately. It. Exactly. Whereas it's our interpretation of it is positive. Yeah. Because of I don't know, just in terms of obviously but, but based on what is the defined on yeah, 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 when you look yeah, at the definition yeah. of it there is actually nothing toxic about it yeah, yeah, yeah. but i feel like in today's society we look at ego as something that's negative yeah, yeah, yeah. when really it's not it's not yeah, yeah, yeah. one thing that i found interesting is that you you spoke about the good things about having a healthy ego and mm. with your state of mind where you're at physically where you're at and spiritually where you're at so in terms of having an, an unhealthy ego what do you think that encompasses for you what's your envision what's your like thoughts on that I think, um, <clears throat> just going back to the self-importance thing, and yeah. I, there's this one question I usually ask on Beyond the Surface, it's around how do you get a feeling of importance? Hmm. Um, and I think some people get the feeling of importance by kind of, I don't know if I can swear, by shitting on other people. Yeah, belittling other people. Yeah, belittling facts, out, making facts, other facts, people facts, feel facts, true. worse than they are. And they, facts. they feel very important. They go like, I feel so good because yeah, for real. I can make other people feel so Bullies, small. it's bullies. Yeah, bullies, Literally, yeah. yeah. So, so it's just, how do people get the feeling of importance? I think for me, the unhealthy part is just if they get the feeling of importance by expense of other people, mm. of other people feeling like mm. maybe low, mm. sad, um, whatever, like however they make other people feel. Yeah. Um, I think that's that's an unhealthy way of you know feeding the ego and yeah, yeah, yeah. Just getting that that feeling of yeah. so, you know self esteem and whatnot. Not having the healthiest one could block you from certain things. It could like you know you could be so fucking humble that you let opportunity just pass you by by being cool. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I feel like yeah, you could definitely just be like you know 
let opportunities face not fight for things because you don't want to be like you don't want to shine your light to be like yeah. how, how good am I like this happens like you know I've seen <laughs> it happen to me at work yeah, certain times yeah. like you know, the, I know I'm better than someone that's the common know? ground for a lot of these things I think work yeah or, or work places. that's how it is I know I'm better than someone at doing a certain thing but because I don't want to I don't want to be like guys look at me like you know what I mean like <laughs> Like, so I don't end up, I don't end up tooting my own horn or putting my name in the hat for things yeah. because I feel like people should just recognise it from, like, they should recognise I'm doing my thing yeah. rather than, rather than me having to show everybody. I feel like once you have to show someone I'm doing something, then am I really doing it? Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. if I'm really doing it, you should be able to recognise. Yeah. But realistically, everybody's in their own world. Yeah. No one's got, you're not the focus of, you're not the main, you're not the main focus in other people's lives. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. you have to bring things to their attention. And then you then have to look at why it has such a negative connotation to the point where you're now asking me, what do I think of healthy ego? Mm. For you to even con like ask whether an ego is healthy or unhealthy shows the damage that has been done on the term. Obviously, we see ego as a separate abstract. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's its own term in English, but the actual originality of the word comes from I. So if I said I, the personal pronoun there's no negative connotation to i but there's a significant negative connotation to the term ego it's become its own thing and it's almost been demonized in the modern society so that's why it's important to actually see where the, the term comes from and it's taking its life of its own i try and keep it in check i see i see that how ego destroys a lot of people mm. or i try and channel it like, the thing is yeah like for example when someone hurts you, yeah. most of people's natural instinct is to, is to do, is to is spite, do something like spite, hurt back, right? Spite, spite's kind of unlimited with ego in a sense where like, instead of using that spite to attack back, yeah. you use that, you channel that in and say, you know what, I'm really hurt, I'm really angry. But how can I use this, this emotion, because it's real emotion, right? Mm. My ego is really, sometimes check your ego, but if your ego has to come out and say, you know what, fuck that, I'm not, an, I'm not, I'm not a dickhead or I'm not that guy, but channel it in a way where I'm going to use this anger, I'm going to use this fuel and I'm going to channel it in something that's productive and that's going to win because the problem is when you use your ego, when you act off your ego and not channel it in the right way, you usually go down the path of destruction. It can be detrimental, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Say you're having an argument with someone or yeah, a discussion yeah, yeah. and then you you complete your you think you're completely right yeah, in the situation. Yeah, yeah. Would that be having too much ego? No, not at all. It could no? just it could just you be you strongly believing yeah. in, in what you believe in what in whatever it is. Like but I, I think, think if it's how it comes across. Exactly. Though, I was gonna say I how think, it comes across, right? Because yeah. you can say something to someone yeah. with no consideration of how they're feeling. Absolutely. Then that's what I feel like is, is yeah. wrong. But yeah. if you're able to kind of not only get your point across, but make yeah. them understand you're not saying it in a in a in a um, in a negative way or trying to down downplay whatever they're yeah, feeling, exactly. then I think that's that's if anything that's that's probably better because I think sometimes yeah. where a lot of blurred lines comes into play is where people feel they've got to dim their light to make yeah, other, yeah, other yeah. people feel comfortable. Yeah, of course. And course. in that regard, you're never gonna you're never gonna feel like you're getting things done in the right type of way. You're always gonna have maybe a bit of resentment towards people because yeah. it's always their way, not your way. Exactly. Um, but I feel like if, if you're able to kind of just make sure you're imperfect towards other people, yeah. it's not just your way or the highway type of thing, or like they can understand why you're moving a certain type of way, it's not just that for no reason, yeah. then I think that's when um, you kind of come across in a better light. Yeah, yeah, imperfect, empathy, yeah. that's a big one, yeah, yeah, for sure. And I understand why there is a negative perspective on it, because when you have books like um, e Ego is the Enemy, Enemy by yeah. Ryan Holiday, <laughs> It's I like, have read that, by the way. I've read it, yeah. Well, I, I, I've, I've I think, it's, it I think it's an amazing book and I learned so much about it. As, as, as like, to how, say? even though there is this importance of, you know, um, self-importance, it can be good for, for you as a man. Yeah, it yeah, can yeah. also be destructive. And I think it's, yeah, it's good to have that awareness of how it can turn into su such a negative for people yeah, yeah, around yeah, yeah. you as well as yourself. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's a great book, but we shouldn't entirely demonize ego because if we all go look in the dictionary at the perspective of ego, mm. there's nothing toxic about it. It can just be used to a toxic manner. If you're saying you're right at the bottom, that correlates to me asking you as well, maybe in terms of your personal relationships, did you see yourself as someone, I know maybe you didn't like yourself or maybe the relationships you were having, your ego has been impacted towards that negatively? Like what did you have to change or 
what, 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 what was your view on that in terms of your personal relationships? I hated myself right. um, and I hated what I stood for. Okay. Um, I deemed myself as an evil person. Yeah, uh, very evil in that um, I thought I was better than I was and that, thank you, and it, um, that showed up in how I conducted myself. I did achieve things with that mentality, so don't get me wrong, it got me further than most, most of my peers very, very quickly as well, financially, academically, um, in terms of getting things that I wanted. I got it quite fast. Do you feel like every man has an ego? Yeah, I think every man's got an ego. I think I think I like the conversations you're having now about healthy ego, right? So mm. I think I think a man with an unhealthy ego is the man that's insecure about certain things and then that mm. comes out in the actions that you spoke about. Mm. And I think someone that is like secure and they have a healthy ego, he, sh he shows up different in the world. And you're about saying, you know me, sometimes I'm just like, I'm too humble with stuff. I feel like I don't like, I just, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't champion myself enough. I think oh, that's what it is. Okay, in that in regard. That, in that regard. I thought you meant in an arrogant term. You said no, you're no, no, no. Okay. You're more the other side. I'm more the other humble. side. I'm too. I would say I'm, I'm, I'm definitely. It's in my nature to be more reserved. not reserved and things like that. So I feel like definitely being more reserved has, uh, when I look back at certain things that's happened, um, definitely I could have piped up more. If I, I could have piped up more to, to be like, yes, I'm good at this, boom, 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 boom. Put me forward for this, mm. put me forward for that. So like certain times, yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's something that I definitely need to work on. But then when you hit, but then it's just like, if I frame it as be, as, as like improving my ego, because yeah. I have that negative, you know, connotations or whatever negative um, association with the word ego, yeah. I'll be like, I don't want to do that. I'm changing my core self. Do you know what you I mean? I feel, I, um, I feel different. Like trying to put, like, do something like that. I feel like um, I'm being a bit of a show off yeah. or whatnot, or being a bit of a um, a bit self-centered or whatnot. The nature within us, it's the desires. It's what I told you earlier on, where we have animalistic desires all the time. It doesn't stop. The super ego is what we should do from the social pressures. And then there's the last concept, which is the actual harsh reality of what we should do and what we can do. Mm. Or what we want to do, sorry. The harsh reality of the world is what we can actually do. What well, like I, I, our innate desires. Yeah, no, so there's the innate desires, which is what you want to animalistically do, like your desire for lust. Okay. Then it's the concept of what you should do. Society may necessarily say you should or shouldn't do it. And then it's the harsh reality of what you can actually do. I can give an example. And then the ego is the balancing force of everything. Healthy ego is not a bad thing. So for example, this is kind of an ego a lot of men have. A lot of men that, a lot of men that get left in relationships, Hmm. When they get left, it's their pride and ego that kicked in. That like, then they, you see they start they, they start doing things like going to the gym. There wasn't before. Yeah, things like they start taking a start leveling up career wise. It's almost like ah, oh, it's their ego that kicks in. I don't want to be left again. Do you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So stuff like that. It, like again, it's how you use the ego. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. then there's there is a bad side of the ego where like for example like. Someone might say something and you might overreact a certain type of way mm. and it's your ego like in that reason if you had there this person talks to me sometimes it's like bro it's not that deep bro you know what mm. I mean like it is where you sometimes brush it but the thing about us a lot of men a lot of walls are created off the back of ego 100% it's true